Many controls inherit from the base content control class, including button, and they can contain other controls. A button, however, can only contain a single control, as can many other controls. So we need some way to display, for example, a button with both image and text. It can be done. You just need to use some sort of container inside the button as its only child control that can contain multiple other controls. If you want a list box containing a bunch of text box controls, no problem, because a list box is itself a content control. Several controls are useful for laying out other controls because they can contain multiple child controls. One of those is the stack panel, which you've already seen. The stack panel stacks children either horizontally or vertically inside its contents. It's useful internal to other controls. A button, for example, will use this to lay out an image and text within a button. There's also a grid control, which arranges its children in a grid. There's no need for fixed sizes or positions because you can use the columns and rows of the grid to determine where things appear and how large they are. There's a canvas control, which is just an empty canvas. There's no layout logic. You have to manually control each aspect of the layout. You specify margins for each of the controls, and they appear at the correct place within the canvas. But there's no other automatic logic built into the canvas control. Let's start looking at content controls by placing a button within a grid and adding some features to that button. I've created a new blank project, and here I'd like to modify behavior of this grid. First thing I'd like to do is set its width and height so I can play with a specifically sized button within that control. So let me set the height attribute to be 300 and the width attribute to be 350. I also need to indicate that I want it to appear in the upper left hand corner. So I'll set the horizontal alignment. And this is a good reason why I should always have space in front of attributes when you type because I'm not getting IntelliSense as I type. Equals, and I want this to be left. And here, let's get some space here. Vertical alignment, that's better, equals top. So now we have our grid in the upper left hand corner. And I can play with it there. All right, well within that grid, I'm going to add a button control. I can either do it just by typing it here, or I can go to the toolbox and just drag it over. If I drag it over, it gets some attributes by default. If I type it myself, it does not. I'll set the content to be click me, because I always want to tell people what to do. I'll set the horizontal alignment to be stretch. I set it to stretch, it fills the entire width, uh, except if I have a margin, and the margin here is 142 on the left, and it stretches to fill the rest. I'll just set the margin to be 15 all the way around, so it gives me a margin on all sides. Now we have a horizontal alignment of stretch, so it fills all the space except for that 15 pixel margin around the edges. Let's make the vertical alignment be stretch as well, and now the button fills all of the available space. If we look at the markup, it should look something like this. And if I want to add a name attribute, I can do that as well. I'll call it demo button. There we are. And to match other examples I've done, I'm going to go to the Solution Explorer and go to app.xaml and make this have a light theme. There we go, let's shut everything down. Let's see if it redraws itself without having to quit and restart. There we go. It seems to have redrawn that designer just fine without having to reload the project. Okay, now just for the sake of the demonstration here, I'm going to double click the button to create an event handler. There we go. And I'm going to use a pop-up in this demonstration, so I need to add a using statement for windows.ui.popups 
so I don't have to type that every time I want to refer to the pop-up I'm going to create. Now it turns out that to create a message box, it's actually a message dialog, in Windows 8, we have to use an asynchronous method call. To do that, I need to add the async keyword to my procedure, and now it's complaining because I don't have any async code in there, but I will soon. Let me create a message box, MSG I'll call it, and I'll make a new message dialog, and I'll make the text say, hello, and the title will be sample app. And now I need to display that. And I do that by calling the await keyword, then message.show async. So that's how you display a message box in a Windows 8 application. Create a message dialog, and then call the show async method of that message dialog. And of course, you need to use the await keyword because it is asynchronous. Let's verify that it works. I'll save it. I'll run it. Now if I click the button, there's our pop-up. It says sample app is the title, hello is the text, here's our close button, and we're back in business.